Good evening and welcome to our 8th to ninth grade transition night. My name is Jason Crow and I have the privilege of being the high school principal here at Mentor High School. I am sure if this is your first child coming to high school, there might be a little bit of anxiety that you're going through right now. You know, your kid's about to go off to high school, the big bad high school, a little more rigorous academic standards, more social life. Um, it's most likely a larger school no matter where you're coming from. Um, let me assure you though, Mentor High School will feel very small here soon enough. Um, your child will find their way to their classes, they're going to be able to find their lockers, and it's going to be a very smooth transition. I hope that after tonight, one of your biggest takeaways from this evening is going to be the number of opportunities that are there for your child. These opportunities include educational opportunities, social opportunities, and extracurricular opportunities. Before we go over the agenda, let me just do a couple. Well, here is the agenda. Talk a little bit about Mentor High School, our blended learning approach, graduation requirements, and I'll tell you, if you have a, a high school student that is not a freshman, these graduation requirements are different. They are definitely different from when you graduated high school. A little bit more complex, but um, our students have been very successful, meeting all the state requirements, and there's no reason the class of 2024 won't do the same thing. Introductions. Like I said, my name is Jason Crow, and I'm the principal of the high school. Um, if you're not familiar, we, are, we operate on a unit model where that unit travels with your child all four years. So our unit is made up of four, our different units are made up of four people. The unit principal, we have two guidance counselors and a, and a secretary. Here this evening we have Mrs. Crystal Wolf, Mrs. Miranda Rose, and Ms. Serson who are going to get to meet here very soon. And also at the high school we have other administrators. We have Mr. Rostein who will be the unit 12 principal next year, Mr. McKnight, the unit 11 principal, Mr. Dudziak, the unit 10 principal. We have Mrs. Chin, the assistant principal. We have Dr. Glaive and our CTE coordinator, and Mr. Cassell is our athletic director. So, life at Mentor High School. We start a little earlier than the middle schools. Our first period starts at 722. If your child rides the bus, they'll be picked up anywhere between 630 and 645. Our day goes to 226, so they start early, but they get out very early as well. All of our classes are 48 minutes long each day. Well, three days a week, I should, I should say. And because it's such a large building, we give students five periods, five minutes between classes. Lunch, 22 minutes. And it might seem like that's a short amount of time. It is a short amount of time. Um, but however, our students are able to eat their lunch very quickly, and we have not seen an issue. Um, after the first couple days, students kind of learn, learn the system, and they're able to eat their lunch Freshmen and sophomores will go to study hall. Juniors and seniors actually get the full 48 minutes to be in the lunchroom. And I know that 48 minutes, why is it only 22 minutes? We allow 20, or two minutes for travel time. All students are issued an individual locker. Um, we have late start Wednesdays. So if this, is, if this is your first child coming to the high school, late start Wednesdays means we don't actually start our mods 1-2 class to 8.05. What this does, this allows for additional collaboration time for our teachers. Something new to the high school this year is, is an advisory period. Um, it currently meets the second and fourth Monday of each month. Um, so when we have this day, the, our day is still 7.22 to 2.28. 226. However, our periods are a little bit shorter. They're only going to be 44 minutes, which is the same amount of time during Late Start Wednesday. Late Start Early Release, you might have heard something about this. This is for our juniors and seniors. So our juniors and seniors, if they are meeting their high school graduation requirements and they're in line to graduate, at times they'll have an, a late start or maybe they don't come in till closer to 9 o'clock or sometime after 8 o'clock and they get to leave early depending on their schedule. Education at Mentor High School. We have multiple delivery models. Um, no longer it's just the brick and mortar, the traditional classes like when we went to high school. We, we strongly believe in a blended learning approach. So even our classes that meet every day face to face, there's a huge component of technology that's built in. In addition, we have some classes that are blended, even more so than just traditional ones. What I mean is a few days a week students meet face to face with teachers, and then other days a week they're in a different location working on online assignments. 
As a freshman, your child will be in one of these classes. It's going to be their health class. Three days a week, they'll be with the health teacher. Two days a week, they're going to be in another location working on their online classes. And then there's a, there's a couple other classes like that as they progress throughout high school. In addition to the blended learning classes, we also offer a very robust um, online learning program. So if your child is really interested just in a completely online class, we do have numerous offerings for them. One-to-one -one devices, it is true your child will get a MacBook. Um, that's going to be coming in sometime in August. We're going to communicate that date here towards the, end of the high, towards the end of the school year or into the early summer. Three areas at the high school, very popular. One is the hub. That's our old library. We call it the hub. The student center, that's our cafeteria, and our digital labs. Those are our lecture halls. So if you're a graduate of Mentor High School, you probably remember A lecture hall, B lecture hall, and C lecture hall. Now we call them digital labs and Paradigm. So Paradigm, it's, well, I say it's new. It's, you know, it's not, it's a few years old now. That's a professional development center. It's built just east of the gymnasium on our campus in between the gym and the Board of Education office. We're able to do a couple things there. One thing primarily that we use it for is uh, professional development for our staff. Another thing that we use it for is we have multiple classrooms in there that our teachers are able to utilize as well. One area that I want to focus on is, is the hub. Um, you're all coming through Mentor School. Most of you are coming through Mentor Schools right now, so you're used to the renovated classrooms. Um, you know, we strongly believe in, in flexible furniture, utilizing the space um, to its fullest to, to really maximize the educational opportunities for our kids. The hub, so this is our old library, and the reason I have it up here is we actually have a partnership with the Mentor Public Library. So four days a week, Monday through Thursday, our library, the hub, is open from 2.30 to 8 p.m. And it's actually ran by Mentor Public Library employees. So if your child ever has to stay late to study or they need to work on a group project and you don't want your child to go into someone else's house, this is a great opportunity and a great space to, uh, to utilize. In addition, if your child is in a sport and they have a late practice, this is an unbelievable space. They can stay at school in a, in a safe environment, um, supervised by someone, and they can work on their classwork. This is the lower hub. And this is the upper hub. So when I spoke a little bit about online classes and some of our blend classes, all of our online classes, we have students who work in the upper hub, um, as well as several of our blended classes. The only blended class that we don't have that in is our, is our health class. Your, your child will be, in a lecture, will, will be in one of our digital labs next year when they're working on their health assignments. And one key area that we really want to touch on today because High school graduation, one of the main reasons that your child comes to high school, it's more complex than it's ever been. Doesn't mean it's not, it's, your kid can't do it. Believe me, all of our kids are able to do it. Um, but it's just a little bit more complex. There are three parts. The basics, that's what we traditionally know. That's just high school credit. At Mentor Schools, we, we require 21 credits. There is a new thing called competency, and I'll go over that in a few minutes, and also a show of readiness. And we're going to share this presentation. So at the bottom, you're going to see that little blue link right there. If you want to click on that, that will take you right to the Ohio Department of Education website. And you can really read through what these requirements are. I'd like to think I'm going to be able to, to explain that, though, tonight to you. So first, the, high, the basic component. This is the high school graduation. These are the classes that we, that we offer here at Mentor High School. There is a total of 21 credits that your child needs to graduate. A lot of our students have the 21 credits met almost before their end of the junior year. There might be one or two core required classes at the very end they have to take their senior year, but this really has not been an issue for any of our students, especially the ones that are working, are working ahead, not failing classes. And you can see what the requirements are. The four maths, four Englishes, three science, three social studies, the half a credit of physical education. That half a credit of physical education is spread over two semesters, though. So one PE class is equal to 0.25, and the second PE class is equal to 0.25. Health is a half a credit. Business technology, FCS, art, music, world language, we need one credit of that. And then five total electives for a total of 21. The next component is a show of competency. You might be familiar with, with the air test. You might have heard about them. In the past, our students have been required to, to get a minimum score on several of these tests. The state has switched to a new model where they're going to focus on two tests. And those two tests are Algebra 1 and English 2, English 2 being the class that our students take their sophomore year. They have to have a proficient score. 
And I wish I could tell you what that proficient score was, but the state has not decided yet. But, so that's coming soon, that's gonna be March 1st. Um, but over 80, between 85, about approximately 85% of our students have, do not have an issue passing these tests, even on the first chance. So currently the air test has not been a hurdle for our students. I don't, I don't anticipate that being a hurdle in the near future, as I anticipate the actual, the proficient score to actually come down a little bit. So our, our, our students are even, will do even better in the near future. Now there's additional ways to graduate. If you can't meet that score though, these are career focus activities, enlisting in the military, and a earning college credit in a math or English class through our College Credit Plus program. The third component of high school graduation is called the show of readiness, and that requires students to earn two seals. There's 12 to choose from. Nine are, are defined by the state. However, they have not all been defined yet. That's coming soon. And three are gonna be locally defined. So that means our Board of Education will, will adopt whatever our requirements are. And the three that are gonna be locally defined are community service type involvement, uh, fine and performing arts, and student engagement. I'm 100% confident all of our students at Mentor High School will, have, will be able to meet at least two of these, if not many, many more. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to Mrs. Crystal Wolf, who will be your child's unit principal over the next four years. Mrs. Wolf. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is, again, is Crystal Wolf. I will be uh, the freshman unit principal for your students' entire time at Mentor High School the next four, last four years. As Mr. Crow had mentioned earlier, we use a unit format at Mentor High School, so they start with us and they finish with us. Uh, our unit right now is just putting the finishing touches on our 2020 graduation class. We're very excited about that but we're also really looking forward to working with your, your children next year. Exciting times. So, what can high school students and their parents expect from high school as compared to middle school? And then how can we ensure their success? High school is a time when students are given more choices, more independence. These include more courses to choose from, more opportunities. Here at Mentor High, we have all kinds of opportunities beyond uh, just the courses alone. We have all kinds of opportunities, and you'll learn about a lot of those tonight. But we also have, uh, in, a, in addition to the academic opportunities, we also have extracurricular activities and uh, other social events. So um, there, is, there is so much that your child will be involved with so they'll have, they'll have to pick and choose, and they will be independent in that. You, won't, you might not be able to keep up with a lot of it. Um, parents, though, are in, and students are encouraged, though, to look, they're, in look, they're encouraged to look at the various programs and courses at Mentor High to help plan and set goals. And at the end of the year, at the end of the, this, we, we want to get to four years and beyond. So we're going to start with a core set of classes next year, but then we're gonna build on that. Looking in, especially into 11th and 12th grade, there are so many more pathways that students can take. And so take some time to explore some of those options and, and think about you know the future, let them dream. Uh, we also encourage students to learn more about the activities and sports. This not only will help keep students engaged in Mentor High School and the high school experience, Co but colleges and jobs, job opportunities are also always impressed when students are involved with more than just academics. But parents, I would like to caution you. Even, although high school is a time of increased independence, this is not really the time to just let go. <laughs> you know that. Your kids will say they don't need, to, need you to be as involved, involved as much as in years past. But the truth is, is they are still developing their skills in the area of independence, their organizational skills, uh, their time management. Um, so you should continue to be involved by helping them get to school on time. I know 722, I heard a few 
grunts out there, provide advice on how to balance all their new social and academic responsibilities, such as up upcoming projects, tests, and possibly a part-time job at some time. Of course, along with increased independence also comes more responsibility. Uh, just a reminder that grades right from the beginning, first day of school, count towards graduation. Also, it is what colleges and jobs look at. It is part of your overall GPA. So students are expected to be mature and responsible right from the beginning to enough to handle the additional freedoms they are given and balance those with school expectations. This doesn't happen all at once, but should develop as your child gets older. Remember, freshmen are coming into school at around the age of 14, and many are leaving at 18 or older. They'll be adults when they walk out. So we hope that as they move into adulthood, they are practicing good habits for their future. High school also means a greater emphasis excuse me, on academic achievement. High school courses are more rigorous. Grades determine the kinds of jobs you will get and which colleges you will attend. Oops, sorry. The consequence of failing grades do include having to repeat a course or a grade level, and the possibility always exists that they may not graduate on time. So how can you best assist your child with the most, to be the most successful at Mentor High School? First thing is time management. Students need to plan their time wisely in order to effectively manage all their responsibilities. This may include their sports, part-time jobs, social events, and any clubs they're involved with. Also making the right choices. Adolescents face a wide range of academic and non-academic choices and decisions during high school as they become more independent. Students, they need to be advocates for themselves and practice communicating with teachers and other staff at MHS when they have concerns or questions. This is one way that they can make right choices, is, get, is look for help and, and find people to help them with that. Um, I will say I met, I met all your children uh, Friday at Memorial and Monday at Shore. Um, very nice, I'm very excited about working with them next year. I did say one of the things, one little piece of advice was to start using email. They've, been, get, they've had a school e Gmail account since, since I don't know how long, seventh or sixth grade. Um, so I said practice by sending me an email. You might want to go home tonight and remind them of that and uh, maybe say something like anybody who, you know, maybe those students who send me some emails might get, there might be a prize waiting because it's really important for them to start communicating with their teachers um, collaborating with their teachers and really um, working together because every we all just want to see them to be successful. And the last thing, last couple things is organizational skills and good study habits. Students need to keep themselves organized in order to manage the large amount of materials they will encounter in high school. So parents, what you can do is maybe help your student design an organizational strategy. Maybe work on that now. In middle school, I know um, the teachers give you the supply list, the dreaded supply list, and it tells you how many inches the binder has to be and what color and what kind of uh, lines on the paper. Um, that doesn't really happen at the high school. So, you know, to have a conversation. How is, how do they organize their schoolwork now? Uh, Mr. Crow mentioned they're, get, they're all getting a MacBook, so organization could be through digital resources, um, or it could be through more traditional ones. So maybe you know practice some of those now, so that when they come up here, they'll be better prepared. And so, last one was self-motivation and self-discipline. They need to be motivated and disciplined to learn and work hard, um, accept challenges, embrace challenges. Power through at times, and if, if not, then seek help. Um, focus on learning. 
learning. And there's, like I said, there's so many courses, there's so many opportunities for kids to learn so many different things. Um, enjoy the process of learning. Focus on that more than the grades, the grades will come. Because this is the, the, the more that they learn here, then the better they're equipped to make choices later as to what they want to do after high school. Uh, so don't forget, though, that high school is a great time, best time of their life. One in which there are lasting relationships fostered, and they should, so they should have a really good time at high school, learn something, laugh a little, and get involved. So again, I look forward to working with the freshman class next year, and uh, please feel free to email me as well if you have any questions or concerns. My email, uh, if it's not up in a later slide, it is wolf without an E, just wolf, W-O-L-F, at mentorschools.org, and I'd be more than happy to, um, to email you back or call you if you need me to call you. So thank you, thank you for your time, and um, enjoy the rest of the night. Uh, at this point, I'm going to call Mrs. Miranda Rhodes up. She's a uh, guidance counselor for, for the alphabet A through L, and she's going to continue talking to you about um, graduation requirements and scheduling. Thanks again. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Um, as Mrs. Wolf said, I'm Miranda Rhodes. I will be one of the school counselors that will be working with the students of the class of 2024. So I will have students with last names beginning with A through L. And Caroline Serson will be working with the students with last names M through Z. So we really look forward to having them up here with us in the fall. So moving on, I will be discussing the College Core. So the College Core is for students considering attending a four-year college following high school. So you'll see the credits or the requirements are very similar to our graduation criteria but it differs slightly with the addition of needing two credits of a world language. It's two consecutive credits, so level one and level two within the same language, and one credit of a visual or performing art. And this can be satisfied through an applied art class, a choir, or a band course. The state of Ohio has approved five different honors diplomas. So these will require a specific GPA, test scores, and specific course requirements. So I encourage you to take a look at each one and see if it is something that your student would want to pursue um, in the future. Probably planning for 10th and 11th grade courses, it would be really helpful to take a look. That way we can plan accordingly for those pathways. There's the academic honors, the CTE, Tech Honor Diploma, the STEM Honors, the Art Honors, and then the Social Civic, or I apologize, the Social Science and Civic Engagement Honors Diploma. As far as scheduling for ninth grade, your students will be taking six courses each semester, a minimum of six courses each semester. This will include an English course, a math course, a science, a world history, potentially a physical education course, a health class, and then one elective credit. So this will still allow them to have a full period of study hall in addition to their lunch period and a one mod study hall that mirrors that. As for the specific courses where the, that they'll be able to choose from, for English, we have English 9 and English 9 honors. Students going into honors will do so by teacher recommendation. For our English electives, we have drama as literature and a speech course that they may want to consider um, you know, in the upper, upper grade levels. For mathematics, we have Algebra 1 and Algebra 1 honors. If your student is currently in Algebra 1 in eighth grade, they will probably go into either geometry or geometry honors. So they'll just want to talk with their teacher this year about which one would be best for them next year. For our science, we have physical nine science and honors biology. So again, they'll want to talk with their current science teacher to see which course will be the best placement for them. For the honors biology course, they will need to be concurrently enrolled in our honors math and our honors English. So that's just something to keep in mind. 
For social studies, we have modern world history, and again, we have an honors level for that. So that's something that they consider if they really like that area and want to take a little bit more rigor. For the electives in social studies, we have contemporary world issues, world geography, and then two online courses, sociology and international diplomacy. All the descriptions for our courses are in the program of studies, which we have a link for within this presentation. So I encourage you to take a look at the descriptions when they are planning their electives. Some of these will probably be more upperclassmen electives, but again, it's really helpful to take a look at those descriptions. For physical education, most of our kids will go into PE9, which is for a semester. Um, our health class is blended, so your students will be in class receiving direct instruction for three days and then two days in a lab environment where they'll work independently. We also have two conditioning classes, a freshman conditioning that is second semester in the morning for our boys, and then we have a girls conditioning first semester in the afternoon for our girls. The conditioning classes are pretty rigorous and typically designed for our student athletes or anyone that's just looking for a more rigorous PE course. Um, they do run beyond the school day. So the one in the morning will begin around 645 and the one at the end of the day during 1516, our last period runs to, I believe, 315 to 330. So students will be expected to have transportation to school earlier in the morning and be picked up from school if they'd like to take that course. Um, there's also the PE waiver that students can consider. And this was designed for students who are already involved in a physically demanding extracurricular. So potentially one of the, one of the sport on one of the athletic teams, marching band, a cheerleader or a top 25 group, all of those qualify for the PE waiver. So if your student is planning on being involved in any of those and they complete two full seasons, they can waive their PE and be exempt from that and just complete that half a credit through another elective. So there will be intent forms passed out or available at the middle school, um, and those are due back by March 1st to their guidance office this spring. Um, as far as the two full seasons, it's 75% participation. So with the question if a student gets injured, if they didn't complete, complete up to 75%, they would have to count a different season or maybe a different sport that they're in. So, but after two seasons, they've met the criteria and they're finished. Going back to course offerings, um, in our art department, students have the option of taking art explorations, which is basically a general art course for a full year, or our fine art class, which is by recommendation and is also a full year. So I'm now going to welcome Ms. Caroline Serson to the stage to continue discussing our course options. Thank you. Good evening. So I'm just going to continue on with the course offerings. Um, and a few of these are going to be for when your child is, I would say, grades 10 through 12, but just kind of give you new, uh, an overview of some of the exciting new classes that are going to be offered here at Mentor High School. So the PLTW STEM pathways, we have a couple different pathways, kind of getting the kids ready for colleges and different uh, pathways based on their interests. So we have engineering, yeah, the three classes are Intro to Engineering, Design, Principles of Engineering, Civil Engineering and Architecture. And then under the Computer Science, we have Computer Science Essential, our brand new cybersecurity class, um, AP Computer Science Principles, AP Computer Science A. And then here are two additional new classes that are Principles of Biomedical Science, which will be new this coming up school year and then human body systems, and that's coming fall of 2021. So just again, a brief overview. Cybersecurity is one of the hottest new majors and in the job market, so the class was created, but it is for 11th and 12th graders, but it is gonna be a very new, exciting class that we're gonna be offering here. Um, the principles of biomedical science, 
This is again project-based learning and these classes, this one and human body systems are both going to be offered in the near future. Unfortunately, as ninth graders, they won't have as many opportunities to take these classes because there's not room in their schedule just yet, but we're getting them ready. And if you have any questions about any of these classes, we do have all, the majority of our department uh, coordinators here who will answer any questions on the specifics of these classes that myself and Mrs. Rose have just gone over. So for business computer science, Mrs. Claire is our department head. And these are m mostly electives. We have media and marketing, accounting, Law 101, business management, Microsoft credentialing, personal finance, and then all the computer classes I just listed before. Family consumer science classes, these are very hands-on classes too. College and career readiness, family living, sports nutrition, gourmet foods, international foods, all cooking. Um, parenting and child development, teen living, and then these are two brand new classes that we have this year, which are fashion and interior design and green living. Uh, music classes, we have uh, women's chorus, men's chorus, concert mixed. For uh, are your freshmen, the kids will either be in freshman band, they will be in concert orchestra, um, and then marching band. Marching band is not for credit, but you will see it on their schedule. Um, and usually they test into certain bands or orchestras just based on their ability levels. So technology education, we have the electronics and robotics technology. These are all very hands-on classes. If your child uh, likes to work with their hands, I call them like, like little tinkers. This is great classes for them. I would definitely look into these. 3D design, intro to engineering design, principles of engineering, civil engineering and architecture, Woodworking Technology 1 and 2, those were new this year, and Home Maintenance and Design. World Languages, we also have Mrs. Friend here and Frau Cricks, um, two of our world language teachers, and we offer Spanish 1 and Spanish 2, French 1 and French 2, and German 1 and German 2. So all of the classes that I, myself and Mrs. Rose just reviewed, these are all listed in great detail in our program of studies, and you can click on this link and uh, get an even further description of all the classes. Um, Naviance is a phenomenal tool that we are using here at the high school, and your child should already be uh, exposed to it this year in either Shore or Memorial. It is our college and career readiness tool. Our seniors are pretty much living on this tool right now, but there are great uh, programs that we use from uh, career exploration to watching videos on different careers in the field to um, cluster inventories, personality tests, um, and free ACT prep. We love the big free. Um, and I would like to introduce Mr. Crow back up to the stage at this time. Mr. Crow, thank you very much. You know, one of the things that um, are Project Lead the Way classes just did, it wasn't in the presentation today, um, our engineering Project Lead the Way kids on Tuesday, no, not Tuesday, yesterday, yes, Tuesday, were just at uh, Lake the Painesville YMCA, and they did their canoe challenge. They took cardboard and duct tape, and they built canoes that could actually transport a one of our students, or if you go on Twitter, you'll see two of our admin um, going across the pool in, in, a, in a canoe that they made just out of duct tape and uh, cardboard. So, one second here. Okay, so Mentor High School clubs. Like I said before at the beginning, opportunity. Educational opportunities, extracurricular opportunities. We have over 30 clubs and our clubs continue to grow. Um, you'll have any, everything ranging from bully, pre, bullying prevention clubs, gamers clubs, ecology clubs, pride, student government. Um, we have K-pop. There is just so many. If you can think of it, chances are we're going to be able to provide that. So just recently we had a couple students present a few new different club ideas that we're going to start here very soon. Um, well, one we just started, a movie club actually, and the other one's going to be a financial investment club. So this is, it continues to grow here and evolve here at the high school. 
in, at the bottom. That's a link to clubs. That's on our website. Please feel free. We, we always encourage our students to take advantage of, of, all, of some of our extracurricular activities, be that athletic, music, theater, or just our, extra, or our clubs, because it just makes the high school experience so much more fun. Now, educational offerings. So we are very lucky at Mentor High School. You know, one of the things, by being such a large school, we can offer so much to our kids. Um, we offer three things we want to hit on today. Our AP classes, our advanced placement, our CCP, which stands for College Credit Plus, and CTE, Career Technical Education, which used to be called Vocational Education, which has really changed over the last several years. Uh, in addition, we, just, we have other classes, just college preparatory classes as well. But let's first talk a little bit about advanced placement. Um, as you read through this, I'd just like to give you some stats. 465 10th, 11th, and 12th graders are in an AP class this school year. That makes up nearly 25% of that group of students. Of those students, they are scheduled to take 1,017 AP exams this spring, um, which is just really, it's, it's a testament to our teachers and, how, and all the work they put in, making sure our students are, are ready, you know, coming all the way up from grade school, middle school, to the early years of high school, that our kids are ready for these rigorous, rigorous classes. Um, one of the advantages, or there are several advantages to AP classes, there's additional weighted GPA, and we really think it prepares students for college. I mean, we know it prepares students for college, and they have the opportunity to earn college credit based on their performance on the AP test. As you can see there at the bottom, you know, testing out of classes, and they typically need a three, four, and five. Move back, just one quick thing. So I just want to note, make, make note here. Um, if your child is a high achieving student, please do not think when I get to this slide that your child needs to take every single one of these AP classes because they do not. Um, I wish I could tell you the perfect number. I wish I could tell you that if your child takes this many classes, they are guaranteed to get into Yale. They're guaranteed to get into Ohio State. I, I can't give you that. I would tell you that to make sure that your child takes is challenged appropriately. Um, they challenge themselves and they balance their academic schedule with their, their outside life and their responsibilities. Um, we hate when we see our kids take on just a little bit too much and they, they just can't put everything they want to, you know, their best effort into it. So just make sure when your child is picking these rigorous courses that there is some sort of balance in there. And we are always here to help guide your, to help guide your child. It's one of the best things our counselors do. They're able to tell them where they think their talents are. Um, assess where they're at and really try to put them in the best place. So AP classes, like I said, we have a lot. We have 20, 20 current classes here at Mentor High School. And one of the things that we're extremely proud about, because this is not at every school, the AP Capstone Program. It's a two-year program. First year they take a seminar class. Second year they take a research class. Um, and just this past year, six of our students did such an outstanding job that their work was published in a national research journal. Um, knowing students that come from these classes, they are so prepared for college and really for all of their classes. It's just really an amazing program. And the kids that, that are doing the research proposals, they're doing a mini dissertation. It's, it's quite unbelievable what they're able to accomplish their junior year. For more information, I highly encourage you to visit these AP websites just to learn a little bit more. College Credit Plus. This is not new, it just changed names here in the last few years. It used to be called PSEL. Now it's called College Credit Plus. It's open from seventh to 12th grade. So your child who, who know, could have already been taking some of these classes. Um, we are very fortunate here at the high school. We offer four classes every year, currently every year, taught by our own high school teachers. We offer English Comp 1 and 2, and we also, also offer College Algebra and Trigonometry. So unbelievable classes, guaranteed college credit um, through these colleges. Uh, they're weighted classes, and it's just a great opportunity for our kids. One of the key things for CCP classes, College Credit Plus, you know, time management is essential. I mean, they, they are college classes. Um, so there's a certain level of rigor that we expect. There's a certain level of rigor that, that be that if your child's at Lakeland, Tri-C, Lake Erie College, that's going to be expected out of them. And if they are good to go off campus, please note 
that they'll be in class with, with a wide, wide, very wide range of people. They'll be in class with kids that have recently graduated high school uh, to even older adults. And for more information, please visit or please click on that link when we do share this presentation to see the CCP video or CCP presentation that we had here in the Fine Arts Center on January 15th. And lastly, before I turn it over to our athletic director, Jeff Casella, talk a little bit about career technical education, which used to be called vocational education when I, I think all the parents in, in the room today went to high school. Um, it is not traditional vocational education. Majority of our kids that are coming through our programs nowadays go off to college. Um, we strongly believe in these programs. We think there's no better uh, teacher than experience. These are hands-on programs. They're two years. They take, typically students take them their junior and senior year. They're able to earn high school, they definitely earn high school credit, but they're also able to earn college credit. And many of our courses now align themselves to in-demand industry credentials. So just, a, again, a tremendous, tremendous opportunity for our kids. So at this time, I'd like to bring up our athletic director, Jeff Casella. Good evening, everyone. Uh, to kind of reiterate what Mr. Crow was, was talking about earlier, I guess my biggest advice to freshmen coming in is to get involved. Whether that's in athletics, whether it's in music, whether it's in, in theater or, or one of the several clubs that we have here at the high school, get involved, find that group of friends or that, that niche that you can uh, get involved in this school. Um, it'll, it'll go a long way towards enjoying that high school experience that we all want to have. Um, those of you that have been in athletics, uh, involved in athletics at the middle school level, um, it gets much more intense here at the high school. As you can see listed behind me, the different uh, sports that we do offer here at Mentor High. We have 23 varsity sports here at Mentor. Um, everything from our, you know, your traditional football, volleyball, track, basketball, to our newer sports such as rugby and bowling and um, you know, swimming and diving and all these things that we have here at the high school, golf and, and tennis that we don't have at the middle school. Um, but we offer these, these, uh, these sports throughout the year. If you're involved in middle school athletics, you know some of the simple things that you have to have, but in order to participate in athletics here at the high school, you do need a current physical. That physical has to be uh, on file with us. It's good for one calendar year. Um, so. If you're thinking about participating in sports in the fall, make sure that you're thinking about getting that physical. We use a, a, a system called Final Forms. Again, same system as middle school, but it's adapted here to the high school. Um, if you're familiar with that, um, we need to, you need to continue to uh, use that and to fill out those forms ahead of time. We do have pay to participate here at the high school. Um, it, is, it is $200 for the first sport and $50 for every sport after that. Um, and that's on a per family basis. Um, so that is a little bit more than what, what it is at the middle school level. Every, all of this information can be found, can be found at mentorathletics.com, which is our website. That's where the link to uh, final forms is as well. All of that information is there. I, I highly encourage you to, to follow that. As far as well as tryout information will all be posted there prior to the season. So look towards the end of the school year this year. We'll have all of our tryouts uh, information there for our fall sports, football, soccer, volleyball, cross country, tennis, things like that that we play in the fall. Uh, all that information will be there. Also, at Mentor Athletics is our Twitter handle. A lot of our information goes out through that. So if you're a Twitter user, I would encourage that you follow at Mentor Athletics. The last part, and, and uh, just to remind our student athletes, is that if you are going to participate in a fall sport, you need to make sure that your eligibility, know that your eligibility is based on what you do this fourth quarter. So the fourth quarter of eighth grade is what determines whether you're eligible your first quarter as a freshman. In order to be eligible, you must be passing five classes, okay, you have to be passing five classes, and you have to have a 2.0 GPA. Now, we do have a probation option that if you're passing five classes and uh, you have a 1.8, you can still participate, but we put you on probation, which involves morning study tables and some other guidelines that we, help, we use to try to help you get above that 2.0 GPA. So if you think about that, um, a student can have four A's and an F, they're not eligible. Uh, it, it, 
you have to be passing the five. That's not a mentor rule. That's an Ohio High School Athletic Association rule. You need to make sure that they're passing those classes. And those, those grades, by the way, are based on the fourth quarter grades, not the year-end grades. So they may pass the class for the year, but if they got an F in the fourth quarter, that's the grade I have to use to determine eligibility. So make sure that they're not slacking off towards the end of the, end of the school year. Make sure that they're finishing strong and making sure that all those grades are in the right spot. The other, you know, the other thing is they get up here to the high school, a lot of times they, they want to drop an elective or they want to change their schedule around. Make sure that they've talked to myself, their coach, their guidance counselor, their principal, somebody so that they look at that. Uh, the worst thing I have to do is tell a student that they can't play because they didn't take enough classes. So if you have any questions uh, about any eligibility or sport issues, I will be around here uh, later this evening. So thank you. I'm going to turn things back over to Mr. Crow. One other thing with the eligibility here for fourth quarter, we always get the question, can my child go to summer school to catch back up? The answer is no. It's a bylaw from Ohio High School State Athletic Association, so it has to be the actual fourth quarter. They can't go to summer school and earn those points back. At this time, we're going to start doing some uh, specific department type questions. Having done this now for several years, our department coordinators have been able to they're psychic, and they've been able to identify the questions that you're going to ask. So we've, uh, we came up with some frequently asked questions. So at this time, we're going to come up, or they'll start coming up, introduce themselves, tell you what department that they lead, and then afterwards, they're going to be in the hallway, because if, if you do have other questions, we like to answer those as well. Thanks, Mr. Crow. I'm Tracy Coleman. I'm the English department chairperson. And for many years, when the department chairs used to just stand out in the lobby and answer questions, the question that I heard most was, what is the difference between English 9 and English 9 honors, and which one should my child take? So first, let me talk about how they're similar. So both English 9 and English 9 honors will obviously involve reading, writing, and speaking. Both involve a summer reading book, and both involve collaboration and discussion during class. The thing that is most different about the courses would be the amount of work done outside of the school day. What I know is that in honors, there is not homework every night, but there is more homework than there is in English 9. So is 9 honors right for your child? I would say if your child enjoys reading and writing, or at least is willing to do it on a regular basis, um, then English 9 honors may be the right choice. Um, if your child is looking for a little bit of a challenge, a little bit more rigor in the day, English 9 honors would be a good choice. And I always say to parents, you know, if your child wants to try it and is doing well in English this year, why not try? If you start in the honors track, you don't have to stay in the honors track forever. We like you to stay in the honors track for your first year, but, but you're not necessarily committing to it for all four years of high school. And so I encourage any, any student who wants a challenge to give it a try. The last thing I'll say is that I'm the mom of a ninth grader, so I was sitting last year, well, we were up here, but I was at this meeting, and I remember looking at all of the information, and even as a staff member, feeling like, this is so much, and how is the transition going to go? And I want to take a minute and assure you that your child will be just fine. There are so many people here to help. Teachers are under understanding. Guidance counselors are helpful. The administrators will, will help any student who needs it, so please sit back relax, and just enjoy the transition. And now Mr. Skilton will talk about math. So as mentioned earlier, uh, your son or daughter is going to have lots of opportunities for choices with math. It really depends on where they've been. Uh, if they're currently in honors algebra one uh, in eighth grade, then they would be going to honors geometry. Uh, or possibly regular geometry if they're struggling there. Uh, if they're doing really well and they want to try to get accelerated uh, into all those AP courses, they can take, so a very common question I get is, are they able to take geometry honors and algebra two honors at the same time? 
and that would be the one situation where they could double up in math uh, either as a freshman or as a sophomore uh, and take those two classes uh, again if they're up for that challenge and up for that extra rigor uh, that is a possibility uh, if they're currently in regular eight uh, then next year they would have the option of either uh, again stepping up if they wanted to step up into honors we do have an honors algebra one uh, or they would take uh, regular Algebra one, and those would be their choices. Uh, after, um, for all four years, uh, as you noticed earlier, there's four years required for math. Uh, one of the common questions we get is, you know, what kind of calculator does my son or daughter need? Uh, we uh, require for all of our courses at the high school a TI-84 calculator, uh, which they might currently have if they're in Algebra one uh, currently, uh, but they'll use it every single year in high school and in their college mathematics course. They'll use it on their state tests. They'll use it on their college uh, level tests, such as their ACT and SAT. They can use it on all of those things. So it'll be an investment to start, but it's something that they'll have um, all through high school and college and maybe even beyond that. Uh, so keep your eye out for a good sale on that if, if they don't currently have one. Mrs. Uh, Kane is our art department chair. She was unable to be here tonight, but she f thought of three questions and prepped me with the answers. First, what is the difference between art exploration and art foundations? Art, explor art exploration is a year-long general art class for ninth graders worth one fine art credit. Art foundations is a semester general art class worth half a fine art credit for upperclassmen who are looking to take a specialized art class like ceramics for the other half credit. Both explorations and foundations will give students a chance to sample all the types of art we have to offer here and our prerequisites for our other course offerings. Question number two, does art exploration and art foundations count as a fine arts graduation credit? Yes, any of our art classes may be used to fulfill the Mentor High School fine art arts requirement for graduation, the academic honors diploma, fine arts requirement, and the college core visual arts requirement. And the third question is, if my son or daughter is recommended for Fine Art One, do they need to take it this coming year, or they, can they pick it up the following year? This course is designed for those students indicating a serious interest in art, but not necessarily a career in art. The recommendation to Fine Art One does not expire, so students may take Fine Art One in 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th grade. However, the courses are sequential, and students are not able to skip levels. A portfolio review will be the Fine Art One teach the a portfolio review with the Fine Art One teacher in the high at the high school is recommended. Students may also enter Fine Art through a recommendation from Fine from Art Foundations or Art Explorations here at the high school. Fine Art students may take other art other specialized art classes in conjunction with Fine Art, which many of our art talented art students talented art students do. Next, I like to bring up Mr. Pollock our PE and Health Department Chair. So some of the common questions we get in health and physical education, um, first one that's really common for the ninth graders coming in um, for physical education is, do we still have to wear a uniform? And the answer is no. Um, students are permitted to wear um, the uniform from middle school if they would like to, but um, they are allowed to wear any type of clothing that um, they can be uh, at the least restrictive movement in our class, um, but we do require them to wear something different than what they wore to school. Um, numerous reasons, a couple just being that we don't want them to ruin their clothes and we don't want them to smell the rest of the day. Um, another common question that we get for our health classes are, are we allowed to retake tests and quizzes? Um, when the health class was uh, pretty much all online, um, there, there were different opportunities to retake the tests and quizzes a little bit more often. Um, now that we've gone to a little bit more of a blended um, version of it, 
Um, their, their options for taking their tests and quizzes have a little bit more of an open book, open uh, note um, to it. So the opportunity to retake tests and quizzes is, is more of a uh, kind of a special situation that would be worked out with the health teacher. Um, and then lastly, um, we are commonly asked, uh, what is this conditioning class? Um, the conditioning class is the AP class of physical education. Um, it is an advanced class. It is completely geared towards um, our student athletes. Um, it is highly recommended that athletes take this class and not the PE waiver. Almost all of the varsity coaches are on board with what we're doing. Um, it is a very um, specific class that is taught by a nationally um, certified strength and conditioning coach and along with two other certified strength and conditioning coaches and physical education teachers. Um, there are times where within those classes we have up to five people working with the athletes. Um, it is also a class that was mentioned earlier that is much longer than the normal class. We start before the school day starts and then that's the morning class and the afternoon class ends um, a bit after the end of the day, depending on the semester. So um, if, if you have more questions about the conditioning class, I can get a little bit more in depth with it afterwards to answer some questions. Now from our science department, Mr. Butler. Hello, my name is Brian Butler and I'm co-chair of the science department. And I've just got, there's two questions. One's a new one. Uh, we see you have a project lead the way biomed science. Can I take it as a freshman? You can take it as a freshman as an elective, but only if you're not in the band, not in the choir, and not taking art or foreign language. Don't quit the band, take class. Don't quit the band at all. Stay in the band, stay in the choir, stay involved. Those are fun activities and stuff like that. But if you do happen to have an opening in your schedule, whether it's a freshman or a senior, this class is open to everyone. The class starts a new class, starts with a crime scene. Legitimately, the classroom is a crime scene, and throughout the year, it's not a forensics class, it's actually a biology kind of a class, but it goes through and stuff like that. So it is a new class, and you'll hear more about Project Lead the Way, and it was up there that you can click on the website. The big one that we get in the science department is, what do I do for my science class? Do I take physical science, or do I take honors biology? You heard from Mrs. Coleman about how we like to challenge them to take ninth grade honors English, and I think that's completely true. And this is the one subject that if you're debating, should I take the honors or should I wait? If you have any doubt, stay. Stay in physical science. Why? Because you can take honors biology as a sophomore, and you're not behind. So if you come out and you're, I'm taking honors English and I'm taking honors math and I'm, ta I'm in the second language and I'm running cross country and I'm in a marching band and you're worried that my child is going to be overwhelmed, don't move into honors biology. However, if your son or daughter came out of the womb and they're a science kid and they're going to cure cancer, then get that kid going. Then what is the advantage? Why, Mr. Butler, would I take honors biology as a freshman. It enables you to take all three of the AP sciences between your junior and senior year. With that said, you still have to double it up. You either do AP Bio and AP Chem together or you do AP Bio and AP Physics or AP Bio or, or Physics and Chem or something like that. So it allows you to take all of those. If you wait a year, you can't take all. That's it. Personally, both of my kids, one's in college right now, and he's pre-physical therapy. My daughter has all designs on being a pediatrician, so both of them have followed mom and I in terms of science. Neither of my kids took honors biology. But we do have kids. Last year's award winner was a freshman, so freshmen can handle the class. But just my, my, my strong emphasis is if you have a doubt, wait a year. Two-thirds of that class is held by sophomores but a third of them are freshmen. So that's, that's a decision. If it comes between, should I take honors English or take honors bio, take honors English, okay? Next is Mrs. Welch. She's gonna talk about social studies.
Good evening, everyone. My name is Marie Waltz, and I'm the chair of the Social Studies Department. And you basically have one of two choices for um, ninth grade world history. Uh, the first choice is our regular world history, which is uh, a continuation of what your students did in seventh grade. They will start chronologically from about the 1700s and come to the present studying all of world history. Uh, the other option that they have is to take Honors World History, which is, um, goes more in depth into history. It covers a farther expanse of history. It goes all the way back to the Middle Ages and then comes all the way to the present. So again, you've had a lot of decisions to make tonight about where your child might be, you know, where to place them. Uh, our Honors World History is um, a little bit more intense. It has a little more information to it. Um, it is basically revolving more around primary sources and documents that p students will use. It is a great foundation for uh, future AP courses in the Social Studies Department. Uh, we have many of them afterwards, and this gives you a really, really nice foundation for it. And again, like Mr. Butler said, having said that, um, you know, it's where the, your child's interest is. If they are really, you know, loving history, if they read those World War II books or love the Civil War, Honors World might be a great place for them. If they like to write, if they are, you know, stay on task, it is a great place for them. If not, if they're taking, you know, different subjects, like they're taking Honors Bio and Honors English and they're looking at their, their load, you might want to consider, you know, the, the regular world history course, which is a great course as well. So all the cor both courses for ninth graders, um, there's a lot of fun with those. Um, it's world history. People do goofy things. So um, you should, your child will enjoy it. Uh, so uh, I'd like to introduce Ms. Whitfield and Mrs. Uh, Hoos for special ed at this time. Hi, I'm Jill Whitfield. I'm one of the special ed department coordinators. Um, so one of the questions we wanted to answer is how are services determined at the high school level? So um, every student in special ed services do receive their services tailored to their individual needs and the IEP team will be the one, uh, the people making that decision on what those services are. Um, Hillary and I will be traveling um, at the end of the month, at the end of February to each of the middle schools along with the school counselors um, to meet with the eighth grade the case managers and counselors um, to determine what the needs are and what classes we should be scheduling the students for. Sometimes though there might be some adjustments that need to be made at the beginning of the school year next year so if that were the case we would just hold a team meeting um, so we can make any sort of amendments that are necessary based on what we're seeing. Um, as far as case management we will be assigning case managers typically a few days before school starts. Um, once all the schedules are finalized by the counselors and it's always our goal um, to make sure that the case manager, case manager does see your child at least once during the day. Um, as far as units, families that have students enrolled in units are um, invited to meet with the teacher over the summer and teachers and counselors are in contact throughout that transition. Um, we're also going to be having a special session for the unit families during our upcoming parent information night which will be in March. Um, we have other upcoming events to help with the transition for students with special needs. Um, we'll have a middle school special education transition night in March, on, which is March 31st, and um, we'll be distributing those flyers as we get closer to that date. Also, um, there's a tour we do in May for the students um, in units and other students who you know, might need some extra support so they get to come to the high school um, and go on a tour and get to know the high school a little bit before they come here next year. And now, of course, we always encourage all the students to walk their schedules prior to the start of the year um, to make sure they know where they're going and get a little bit more comfortable with the um, high school because it is a little intimidating. Okay, so the other question we get a lot is how does it look different from the middle school to the high school? Um, and I think the biggest difference is the level of independence that um, is required just because of the layout of the high school, the way the building and the day are set up. Um, and students may only see their case manager in one academic class per day. Um, and they may be interacting with five, six other teachers. 
Um, the other focus is post-secondary transition that really becomes the driving force of the IEP at the high school level. So in other words, we try and really be aware of what each student's goal is for after high school so that we can design their services and coursework to prepare, to prepare them for life after graduation. Um, our goal is always over time to challenge students to become more independent and less reliant on accommodations and modifications as appropriate. Um, little by little, we try and encourage students to take more ownership over their own education and their IEP services. Um, all students are included in the IEP process and we really encourage them to attend their own meetings and become advocates for themselves because that's what they have to do at the college level if they are going to be going to college. Um, it's important to keep in mind what the end goal is. So if you want your child to go to a traditionally, traditional community school, community college or a four-year college, then it's really important to start taking college level classes and to start reducing accommodations and eliminating modifications by the time they are a senior. Um, we also work as a team if it's appropriate to secure adult services for employment and independent living. So that would be like Lake County Board um, and OOD and um, other vocational programming. Um, and then just at the high school level, the case manager is a good point person if you have any questions or issues or concerns. Um, but we also encourage you to reach out directly to classroom teachers because some, that's the best way to get the most accurate information. Um, and then email just because there are so many teachers is a great way to communicate. Um, so one thing just to remember is your kids will be fine up here. The staff and teachers, we're all here to help. Um, and if you have any additional questions, we'll be here after. Um, so next is our foreign language, Mrs. Cricks and Mrs. Friend. Good evening. I'm Mrs. Friend. Good evening, and I'm Mrs. Cricks. So the first question that we have is, my son or daughter has currently a C in Spanish 1 or French 1 or German 1, so should she or he takes Spanish two, French two, or German two? So our recommendation is that if your son or daughter has a strong C, so let's say 75%, then it's probably okay to move on to the next level. Um, our concern is that the students um, don't struggle and that they enjoy what they're doing. And we've, we have found that over time, um, if their grade is much lower than a C, then they don't have the foundation that's necessary to move forward. And um, we would like them to be successful. So we recommend they repeat to get a stronger foundation if they need to. Okay. Question number two. Is it possible to switch from one language to a different language in ninth grade? Sure. Um, you can start level one at the beginning of any year. Um, in fact, we encourage you to start level one. Maybe you want to take level two, uh, one and two of a language, start another language, why not? And my last question, what about the honors diploma? Uh, you've heard a little bit about the honors diploma, but one way to earn the honors diploma is to study three years of one language or two years of two languages, and that will help you toward having the honors diploma. Thank you very much. We're going to turn it back over to Mr. Crow. Two slides left. Additional resources, please visit our new website. Um, and then Twitter, you know, we, can, we communicate a lot through Twitter. Um, I would encourage you to follow myself. And if you're going to be involved in athletics, please follow obviously our athletic program, but once your child gets involved in different extracurricular clubs, they, they all have their own Twitter handle. It's just an extremely easy way to communicate, and I'm sure you're already well aware of that as you're, most of you are coming through the mentor school system already. So welcome to the welcome class of 2020, 2024. Um, I hope that we put your mind at ease. I hope that really came across how many opportunities that we, are, that we, do, that we do have here at the high school for your child. Um, while initially, they might just be looking to uh, survive here. Eventually, they're going to thrive. You know, I, I, I've seen it numerous times here. Um, our kids excel, and, and there's no reason your child's not going to do the same. Thank you for being here. Enjoy the last few months of uh, middle school, and you'll be hearing from us very soon.